sine, 2 sine theta equals 1. So I have, this is, this is page 9 and 10 in that last book that I gave you. Not the one I just gave you today. <clears throat> On the very bottom of page 9. So I have 2 sine theta equals 1. People often don't know what to do with it. If you want to, go like this. Let m equal sine theta. Okay, I have 2m equals 1. Now what do I do? Divide by 2. People are, can see that a lot easier than when it's a sine theta sitting there. Right? Just a single m. When we have a single m, just like we did in grade 10, we would divide by 2. And we get m equals a half. Is that true? M equals a half? Was well, there an M in the question? No, we put the M in. So now we'd have to go back and put back our sine theta back in. If you change your sine theta or cos theta or whatever out with a variable, you have to use a let statement. Let M equals sine theta. Okay, or let M represent. So then I go back and I say sine theta equals a half. How do I solve these? I need to get the reference angles. Correct? We've done this before. So this is sine positive. So if it's sine positive a half, I'm going to actually get two solutions, right? I'm going to get this angle, and I'm going to get this angle. So I'm going to get from here to here, and then I'm going to get from here to here. If I know the <coughs> reference angles, it's pretty easy to find. So it's between 0 and 360. How do I get a reference angle? Yep. Sine inverse of the positive half, right? This one is positive, so it's good. But if it was negative, you would make sure that you do the positive. So that lambda two quadrant once you actually get the reference angle. Correct? It's always with the positive. So reference theta equals sine neg one of a half. Because the reference angle and quadrant one angle are the same, correct? So if I always do a half, I'll always get the reference angle. What is sine neg 1 of a half? You guys should even know this. 30 degrees. I'm off the unit circle. Because when you sine neg 1, you're literally just saying, okay, if I look at the outside of the circle, what angle goes with that? Right? So it's 30. We all agree with that. So what are my two angles then? What's this one? Theta equals 30. Right? Yes? How do I get this one? Theta equals... How do I calculate it? This is my reference angle, correct? Come on. This is my reference angle. What is it? 30. It didn't change, correct? Reference angles are the bow tie angles. So if this is 30, how do I get this angle? From here to here. 180 degrees minus 30 degrees. So it equals 150 degrees. So my two answers are theta equals 30 degrees and 150 degrees. Now please get out your calculators because when we solve, we can always check our answer if it's right or not. So we could either plug it back in and see if left side equals right side, right? <coughs> we'll do that or we'll also verify graphically. So 2 sine 30 degrees equals 1. I'm verifying. What is sine of 30? It's a half, correct? We agreed with that. What's 2 times a half? 1. Yes? If you put, punch this into your calculator in degree mode, you're going to get 1 equals 1. Check. You know you're right. Every time you solve for a variable, even if it's a theta, you can plug it back in and see if left side equals right side, correct? So I solving is the best lesson of all solving lessons because... You can literally plug it back in and see if left side equals right side. And then we can verify 150. I 
we go to sine 150 degrees. One equals one. So we know we're right. Now everyone make sure you have a calculator out if you haven't taken it out yet because we're going to solve it graphically. We're going to verify it graphically. Oh, I have my old calculator. My old computer up. should not have a calculator. Okay, fun fact. I can't punch it into my calculator. So this is the question. 2 sine theta equals 1. Yes? That was the original? Okay, anytime you're given an equation, you can actually type it into your calculator and it'll poop out answers for you where they intersect. So, if I type this into my y1 and this into my y2, go ahead and do that. I have my old computer up, which does not have a TI-83 emulator on it, so I am stuck. I can't type it in. So into y1, type in sine 2 sine theta. Everyone's practicing this. So in y1 in your calculator, 2 sine theta. And in y2 of your calculator, you're typing in a 1. Just 1. Literally, that's it. Now, what mode do we need to be in? Degree, because the answers are in degrees, correct? So check, check to make sure you're in degree mode. And then stop. So in y1, we have 2 sine theta. In y2, we have 1. Everyone's there? Put the mode in degrees, yes? Now go zoom trace. It'll set your window in degree mode. Trace window. So you always just pick your mode before you go zoom trace. Zoom, then click on the set. <coughs> so instead of theta, you can just press X, T, theta, N, because that represents all the variables, correct? So you would go 2 sine x, that, that x t theta n button, <coughs> right? And then you go zoom trace. Does everyone have graphs showing up on your screen? Me too. There should be a sine graph, which is goes like this, for preceding graph, same amplitude, from min to max, and it just goes like this. Make sure you're in degree mode, and then make sure you check zoom trace. Okay, does everyone have a graph that looks like this? Sinusoidal periodic graph, repeat itself for life, onwards forever. Okay, and then after you glance that, put me into text the artist's domain. That's what we're going to look at, chapter 5, is these graphs. Okay? Now, I press Zoom Trig. Zoom Trig got you, it's just a window that is in degree mode so you can see it. Yes? But I want all the answers that fall between 0 and 360. So go to your window. Everyone's going to their window. And they're making their x minimum 0. So that I'm restricting my domain. And my x max 360. How many times does it cross now? Press graph. Two times, guess what those answers are? 30 and 150, let's figure them out. So go second, trace, five. And then go close to the one on the far left and go enter, enter, enter. And you always only take the X value, the Y value at the top. Finding where they intersect, so arrow all the way pop down onto the Now, also noting to self, you can press up or down and it'll pop you off different graphs. So sometimes it's faster to take the shorter one. And then go enter, enter, enter. So second trace five, move to the <coughs> easier one and go enter, enter, enter. And you should get 30. And then what people do is, I just, love, I just keep getting 30. Second trace 5, enter, enter, enter. Second trace 5, enter, enter, enter. Second trace 5. Yeah, because you're at the same spot. So maybe what should you not do? It's the same exact thing, except something different. So we go second trace 5, and now we've got to head over to the other intersection. Move your arrow all the way over to where the other intersection is, and then go enter, 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 and you should get 150. Correct? 
Did everyone get 30 and 150? Can your calculator check your answers for you? Yeah, so any of these solving ones, should we walk away crying? or should, Well, we should. We should either be happy or crying. Crying because we know we got it wrong, or happy because we know we got it right. Because you should know before you hand in your test if this question is right or not. Okay? We don't want any crying, though. We want you to resolve your problems. Okay? Make sense? Okay. Let's go to this one. So guess what I do, guys? I will find the answer before I can do the question, so I can confirm as I go along. So I will always type these in first. Okay, cool. Y1, Y2. And then I have people real sad, real quick, because they're like, if this is left, I don't know how to type in cotan. Remember I told you when you don't know how to type something in, go to your formula sheet, correct? So we're going to go 4, and then we're going to go to our formula sheet and look at cotan. Because cotan is not a button I have. But if I go to my formula sheet, I could technically type in cos over sine if you so choose. But these are the ones I go to. I can do 1 over 10. So that's why the fraction button is your friend, if you actually have the fraction button, like the alpha link, or this, the uh, second y equals and then fraction button, if you have them. If not, you're going to have to literally type them in as a fraction in brackets. So before 1 divided by tan theta, which you can just press the, the button, the xt theta n button, and your y2 is 1. What mode do I need to be in this time? Degree, because it says degrees, correct? But what's my window this time? My x min is 0, and my x max is 180. And the reason why they do this is it's often a written, a not a written response, sorry, a numeric response, and they want one answer. They have to restrict their domain to a type domain. Now find that one intersection. Now if you pop up onto the straight across line, it's a lot easier than riding the tan lines that pop up and then pop down and pop up. Because a tan graph actually looks like this. And then it has asymptotes. And it repeats itself. Which we're going to talk about in the next one. So I would just go onto the horizontal line and ride it across. What did you get for your answer? Zero and one eighty. What'd you get? The nearest ten. Seventy six. Or if the nearest hundredth, we could do seventy five point nine six, right? But I know ahead of time, I should be getting seventy five point nine six degrees. Now, how is this helpful? <coughs> this is helpful so that when you get a, an answer that's crazy, it's not like an even nice thirty degrees. You're not panicking, right? When you get an answer of 76.96, you're like, yeah, I got this. I'm good. I'm great. You're not panicking. You're not freaking out, hoping it's wrong, or it's right, not wrong. Correct? I already know what I need before I even start this question. Do you agree? Okay. Now, we can actually start this question. So we have 4 cotan theta equals 1. Now, sometimes that's overwhelming, so I could go let m equal cotan theta. I always use m because they never use m for the most part. Not never, don't often. So 4m equals 1, divide by 4, m equals 1 quarter. So cotan theta equals a quarter. What are we allowed to flip? Answers or angles? We're allowed to flip answers. We are not allowed to flip angles. And if you understand why you do the trig, you will do better. So cotan, tan is tan your Xbox. So this is Xbox your. Correct? So I could do cotan negative one of a quarter if I had the cotan negative one button, but I don't. 
So what am I going to have to switch this to? I don't have a cotan button, but I do have a tan button. Tan theta equals what? 4. Because if this is x over y, then it would be 4 over 1, y over x. We agree? Can we do the math for this one? Yes. It's tan is positive. So tan is positive here and here. What's the catch? I only have one answer. Yes. It's zero degrees to 180 degrees. And this bad boy is too big. You agree? So we literally just need the reference angle because the reference angle is my answer. How do I get the reference angle? I go theta equals tan neg 1 of 4. I'm suspicious it's going to be 75.96, but I don't know. See how we should know where we're going so we don't have like those freak out moments because we understand where we're Whoa! It's the... Well, looky here. Same answer. There's a lot of people looking at the door like someone was here. There's no one here. I was very excited the answer matched. Boom! We are happy. We know we're right. We're not panicking. We're like, we got this. Right? We're all over this. All right. There's a square. Why is there a square? Where's the square business? Why is it here? Why does it hate me? I don't know. We don't panic. We say, let's find the answers first. All right? And you know what? Because I'm a rebel, I'm going to keep it in degrees. Because you guys panic when it's in radians. So we're not going to do that today. Nope. No panic. So I know that this needs to be my Y1. And then we're like, oh boy. What do I do? Remember when the squared is in the middle, there is no way I can type a squared in the middle on that calculator, correct? Because the moment I press sine, which is the opposite of cosecant, a bracket opens. Can't put a squared there, correct? So let's talk about this. I would have y1, I'm just going to, this is y2, we're just going to discuss how I can type it in. So I have 4 cosecant squared theta. Love that. Can't type it in that way. Okay. Well, that's the same as 4 cosecant theta all squared. Okay, when the squared's in the middle, I can retype it as all squared, like this cosecant itself is squared. Great. Still can't type it in. Okay. Y1 equals 4. What can I put cosecant in as? If I'm stuck, I go to my formula sheet. What does my formula sheet say I can put it in as? <coughs> 1 over sine theta squared. Can I type that in? <coughs> yes. And then my y2 is 25. We all believe in ourselves. We can type that. Okay. Typing them in. y1, y2. Okay, then people go into panic-stricken mode because they're like, Ms. Lepp, nothing is showing up. This is stupid. I was doing well. I understood this, and now you suck. Now you gave me a screen that doesn't work. You're a terrible human. That's what you're thinking. You're like, I had this, and now my life is ruined. Thank you very much. Remember, Y equals is a horizontal line, correct? These ones were way better because it was Y equals 1. Cool. At 1. This one is y equals what? 25. So most of you have like a y max of like 3. Are you seeing that? Are you going to see it on your calculator if you have a horizontal line at y equals 25 and your y max is 3? 
No. So make your y max bigger than 25. Correct? Because you want to see a horizontal line at 25. That's a hint. So I made mine be 30. Now are we seeing some graph? Yeah, now we see something. See, we're not, it's not going down badly. It's, we're fine. We're cool. Cool as a cucumber. I need to change my x min to 0. I think it was already there. And then my x max to 360. <coughs> How many solutions am I going to get, guys? How many times to cross? Four times. How many solutions am I going to get? Four, right? So let's figure them out. Second trace, five. Remember, arrow up or down if you want to get it onto the straight line instead of riding the curve. So I'm getting x equals 20 and by x equals theta. The variable's not x, it's theta. Theta equals 23.58 decimal, 58 degrees. Second trace, 5. Use my other computer that has the emulator on it. 156.42 degrees. So I know before I even attempt this question, I need four answers. True statement? Oh, wait. So we can actually attempt the question. So we have 4 cosecant squared theta equals 25. And if the cosecant is overwhelming, we can let m equal cosecant theta. We get 4m squared equals 25, and a lot less people are freaked out about that. Okay? How do I get m by itself? Divide by 4 first. m squared equals 25 over 4. Then what am I going to have to do? Square root, and when I do this symbol, what do I have to do? Plus minus, which is actually going to get me all the positives and all the negatives, which is why I get four answers. So plus or minus 5 over 2. And then instead of bringing sexy back, we're going to bring cosecant theta back. You're welcome. i got one left. The rest of you still sleeping. Okay. Cosecant theta. Plus or minus 5 over 2. That bad boy is an answer. Can we flip answers? Yes. Can we flip angles? No. no. So when you get a 7 pi over 4 and you really like it, can that ever be 4 over 7 pi? No. Slap your hand and be like, girl, I don't know what I can do, but I know I can't do that. I get the very least. Do not flip your angles. So cosecant is resume your. Because sign is sign your resume. So this is resume your. Oh, now the blue came back. Sine theta would be plus or minus 2 over 5, because it's your resume. We agree? <coughs> so we know if it's plus or minus sign, I know I have an angle here and here for the positives. Okay, seriously. Draw blue sometimes or not. Okay, I have an angle here and here for positive sign, and then I have an angle here and here for negative sign, so I'm going to actually get four answers, correct? The positive signs result in the top two quadrants. The negative signs result in the bottom two quadrants. I need to get the what angle? Starts with an R. Reference angle. So I need the reference theta, which is sine neg 1, of what? Positive 2 divided by 5. Correct? We're never doing negative. 
He deposited a Lambton quadrant one where the reference angle exists. This is why we do the positive to always get a reference angle. So we do second sine, which is going to get me 23.58 because I already have an answer. So if it doesn't, I'm going to be sad. Oh, 22.58. So fun fact, 23.58, 23.58, I'm going to use red. This is 23.58, this is 23.58, this is 23.58, this is 23.58. Because those are all reference angles, they're the bow tie angles, we agree? Now we can get our answers from there. This theta is 23.58 degrees. What would this theta be? How would I calculate it to get me here? 180 degrees minus 23.58 degrees. I wouldn't round it till the very end, but that's okay. And weirdly, I'm going to get 156.42 degrees because that's an answer that I have. So I know what's happening, right? Boom, that's one. Oops, this is one. How do I get this one? You go 180 plus the reference angle, right? 180 degrees plus 23.58, which I believe is going to get me 203.58. Oh, wait, there's an answer already, and it matches it. I'm happy. Then, how do I get this one? 360 minus that reference angle. So I'm going to get 336.42. <coughs> See how I got all these answers? And I can box the answers now. Boom. Because I showed the work that got them there. Right? So um, I want you guys to work on 11 to 20 in that little booklet booklet. That's your homework for today. Your homework, polynomials, that one but that one homework and then the two trig 4.1, 4.2 front and back side are due tomorrow. I really hope you've done them already. You haven't, it's on you.